Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about growing peas. I'll give you a lot of tips to help you hopefully grow peas like this. These are almost six feet tall. First thing you want to know about peas is that they are a cool season crop. You can grow them in the spring from the cool weather all the way into the beginning of the summer before the soil gets really warm. And you can grow them again in many places starting in August when it's hot into the cool of September and October. And if you want to subscribe to my channel, I'll show you how I grow fall peas. They are hollow stemmed. That means they need to be trellised and supported. The stems break really easily. At the end of the video, I'll show you some ways that I plant these in the ground as seeds, spacing and such. But I thought it'd be best to really show you what it looks like when peas grow, are grown successfully. These again are almost six feet tall, loaded with all kinds of snap peas. And again, the stems are hollow, so you do want to put in sticks, stakes, you can put in string if you want, something that will keep them upright so that they don't fall over, bend, snap. These have hollow stems and they break, they bend really, really easily. Now, as I was saying, they are cool weather crops. So the leaves actually can take a frost and a freeze. The flowers and the pods they can't take a frost. So you can start these early in March in many areas and as they germinate and break the surface if a frost comes the leaves will be perfectly fine, the stems will be perfectly fine. So the timing is to get these established and growing while it's still cool, frost is around, but as they get tall enough to produce flowers and pods the frost is gone and that timing is going to vary in different zones. For here in Maryland Zone 7 it's about the end of March, beginning of April, you get your peas into the ground. And again, I'll show you the spacing. But peas like to be planted close together. They will climb on each other, they will support each other if you drop in the stakes. So the more peas, the merrier. Let me show you a couple different examples of the peas that I'm growing. Peas take about 70 days to mature from germination, not from when you put the seed in the ground. When you're putting the seed in the ground when it's cool weather, it could take seven days, 14 days, or longer for the seed to germinate. So if you want to start some peas indoors in some seed cells, once they break the surface, you can bring them out and put them right into the ground because it can take that frost. And it's a myth that you can't start peas in starting cells and that they don't like that. They do perfectly fine. So that's one way to get a jump on your spring peas because sometimes when the ground is cool and soggy, the seeds don't germinate well outdoors, but if you germinate them inside and then transplant them, you're going to get a nice crop of peas. And the peas that you're looking at now were started indoors and they were transplanted into the pot right here or into this uh, fire ring. There's no bottom in that. And again, you can see all the peas on there. Peas take about 70 days to start producing. So again, it's from when it germinates and breaks the surface it's about 70 days. Now, when the weather starts warming up, when the soil temperature gets into the 60s, the days start going into the upper 80s, peas are going to shut down and the crop is going to end. So again, you want to get them in early in the spring and you can plant them in the fall. But these are doing really, really well. Quick tip, if you want to harvest a pea, hold the stem up top and then just pull away. If you tug on it, it's going to break the stem because again, these are hollow stems. Let's look at a few more. Peas do really well in containers. These are 10 gallon fabric pots from Root Pouch. I sell them at my seed shop. There's probably eight or 10 pea plants in there. Again, they need trellising. They don't mind being overcrowded. Now, one of the tricks, or one of the things I recommend is drop your transplants or your pea seeds every two or three weeks. These were started three weeks after the peas were put in the ground over there. You don't want to put down like a hundred pea seeds and they all mature at the same time. You're never going to be able to eat all that. So do a couple plantings every two or three weeks apart. This way you get a continuous supply of peas. Now for just a point of interest, maybe you're getting your peas into the ground late and it's getting warm and you may not get a lot of pea pods. You can also harvest the shoots. They taste like peas. They're delicious. So you can also grow peas just to harvest shoots. And you can even put in more seeds that way. Keep them well watered and you can harvest the shoots. They're absolutely delicious. None of these plants have been fed once the seeds or transplants were dropped. I just set the soil up with a couple handfuls of any granular fertilizer and they do really, really well. The key is to keep them well watered. Let's check out one more area. Now you don't need to do a mass planting like I did. This is just a couple of seeds on each side and they're doing quite well. 
I wanted to show you the spacing and get in really close. So right in here, here's my hand, about a four finger space. You can drop in two seeds about that far apart and then you could do a row right down here too and then you would put another seed right there, another seed right there, another seed right there and then you can kind of just build your rows that way. But this is how close you can put them together and they do extremely well. Crowded together as I was mentioning and you always want some sort of trellising. Here's another area where I'm growing peas and you can see that I'm using cattle panel right up here to support them and then just some bamboo stakes that I put X across to keep them tucked in. The bunch over here got really big and it fell over so I will just grab another stake and kind of see if I can do this one-handed. Just lift them up. Step back. And then you're just pushing them back just like that and then I will tuck them back into the cattle panel and you can see how fragile they are. So if you don't support them they're going to flop and fall everywhere. But again, planted early in the spring, doing extremely well. It's the last week of May. Let me show you the distance that we planted the peas in here. Pull out some of the, we some of the weeds, get them out of the way. So there's one pea right there. This is actually two fingers. Sometimes I just do two fingers and do a seed, two fingers, a seed, two fingers, a seed, and do that all the way across. And this is two rows. There's a row in the back, two fingers, another seed. So you could do something like this. One inch deep, two fingers, two fingers, two fingers, and just drop a single pea seed right in there, covered over. About a half an inch to an inch deep is perfectly fine. What we were doing before, we were doing two seeds. You could do one seed if you're worried about them being overcrowded. Every four fingers just like that and then you would just do that. So again you could put one seed in there if you're worried about overcrowding or with the four finger space two seeds per hole. They love to be packed together just keep up the watering. So when you're planting in a container something that doesn't have an open bottom where the roots can go into the ground I plant them a little bit differently. You want to go about four fingers, two inches from the edge of the pot and then four fingers around. If your hand is, you know, smaller than mine, then go ahead and use five fingers. But you get the idea. It's nothing, you know, no rocket science here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if you're worried about watering, because if you put in a lot of plants, you're going to have to water more. So you could put in a single seed in each of these, remember, half an inch to an inch deep, and that would be 10 plants. That's plenty to get a nice harvest. If you want to stay up on the watering, watering more often, you could put two seeds in here, or you could do two seeds, one seed, two seeds, one seed. It doesn't matter, but you get my point that you can overcrowd them. They would need something in here to trellis, and you just water them in, and you let them go. To set up the soil, something like this, I take any granular fertilizer, any organic granular, with something around a 555 N, P, and K. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. It could be a couple numbers higher, a couple numbers lower. I fill every container that I have halfway with something like this, just an easy handful, maybe two or three tablespoons sprinkled on this side, on that side, mix it in, and then I fill in the rest of the soil, throw in another handful, mix it in. You can't really overdo it with the granular fertilizer. That sets up my soil. I just water them regularly and let them do their thing for the summer. Okay, let's look in one more area. So I even have some peas out here where I have a lot of flowers. Again, another 22 gallon container. It's a metal pot. All pots should have drainage. Now these are shelling peas. And what's the difference? So inside the garden, the peas right here, notice how they're flat. The peas in there are immature. Those are called snow peas. That's what you find a lot in Chinese food. And then you have your sugar snaps, which are the edible pods. The more plump, you can eat the pod and the peas. And that's just the main two people seem to enjoy most is the snow pods, which are edible too. Again, you see that a lot in Chinese food. And then the sugar snap. The shelling peas you can't eat the pods. 
they grow nice plump peas inside you have to shell them that's why they're called shelling peas and then you just eat them a different way I throw them into salads again they're growing really well in these containers this is a tomato cage in there a couple of bamboo poles in there to support them if for some reason your peas look yellow when you're just getting started within that first month they break the surface they're not doing so well just give them a drink of fish fertilizer. It's a 511 NP and K, and there is truth that peas fix their own nitrogen, but sometimes they can still have struggles or have their own problems. So give them a drink of fish emulsion. Just follow whatever the instructions are on the bottle, and that should be fine. That'll get the peas back on track. They're easy to grow. The biggest problem people have growing peas is they don't put enough seeds or transplants into a pot or into a space. Overload them, they'll do really well, Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. I'll be planting peas from seeds and transplants in the fall. I'll show you how to do that. And please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com.